everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and compare the iPhone 14 Pro against the iPhone 10 and see which specific phone you should go and pick up. Now, obviously I'd probably recommend buying the iPhone 14 Pro, but links will be down in the description. You can get them from there. You can help support the channel at the same time. Now side by side, you can definitely tell there are a few key differences between them. The iPhone 10, which came out in 2020, has a five, came out in 2017. It has a 5.8 inch Super Retina OLED display. And it was a pretty good panel at the time. It wasn't like the highest quality, but the biggest thing that this you know panel actually ended up bringing was the lack of bezel and the notch that the previous iPhones pretty much didn't have. Compared to other people, like maybe like Samsung's, maybe their displays were still better, but this was a really big change from Apple. And even now, this panel still holds up very, very well. And I'm a humongous fan of this display. On the iPhone 14 Pro, this is also still a very good display as well. It is a 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED panel. Now some key things, the notch is now gone, but it's still there with the dynamic island, which is a little bit in more in your face, you know, some would argue, than the notch. So that is very interesting. It sticks more into the display. It is also a ProMotion display, which is really nice. So, you know, it does refresh at 120 hertz, which that is really, really cool. In terms of thinness and thickness, we are getting a thicker phone on the iPhone 14 Pro, which is, you know, very good. You're getting, you know, bigger battery on that phone, which is really nice. You're getting really good build quality on both as well. It's a thinner phone on the iPhone 10. You're also getting a SIM card tray on the iPhone 10 on the other side, which is really, really nice. Fortunately, on the 14 Pros, we do not have that SIM card tray anymore, which is kind of sad. And on the back, we have a dual camera setup on the iPhone 10. We have a triple camera setup on the 14 Pro. And look at how big and massive that camera sensor is on that 14 Pro. It is a massive sensor on that machine. I mean, in my opinion, that is probably one of the bigger sensors you have on like a phone with a 6.1 inch panel. Now, some other big things, you are getting glass bags on both. You're getting wireless charging on both and IP certification. But some big things to keep in mind, the 14 Pro has this frosted glass back, which feels so much better than the standard glass back. Actually, the standard glass back still feels pretty good, but this frosted glass back feels very, very premium. You can tell this is a pro model, and you can tell I me mean, the 10 is, it doesn't feel like old phone, but I can definitely tell you the 14 Pro, just like how the 12 Pro, it'll still feel like a thousand dollar phone for many, many more years to come. So. Some other things, I mean, both have IP certification, like I mentioned. The 14 Pro has a little MagSafe little charging puck right here, which is really cool. A lightning port's at the bottom, and that kind of covers it up. You know, there's not really a crazy amount of differences other than that, at least that are worth, like, highlighting on a high level. Some things with the iPhone 10 though, in terms of software and longevity, you know, we're not really too sure how long this phone is going to last. The only thing we know right now is that the iPhone 10 is really the oldest phone that's supported on iOS right now. So the reason why that's important to state is because we don't know if this phone is going to end on iOS 16. We don't know if it's going to continue getting support. And that is where things are kind of at a sad situation. I would love to see and live in a world where this phone could get, you know, the next three versions of iOS. I feel like it could easily handle it. I guess we're going to have to wait and see what happens though. But I think with the 14 Pro, not only is this phone going to outlast the iPhone 10, but this phone is going to outlast pretty much all the phones from the iPhone 10 onward, and it's going to be the longest lasting iPhone as of right now. So if you want the iPhone that's going to last the longest amount of time, well, this is probably going to be the iPhone for you. So that kind of covers it up there. Now let's go and do speed comparison between both these phones. The iPhone 10 has that Apple 11 Bionic chip inside of it with three gigabytes of RAM where the iPhone 14 Pro has that Apple A16 bonding chip inside of it with six gigabytes of RAM inside. So let's go and see which one is the fast one between both. All right, this kind of looks like a weird angle. It's because the camera is so big on the iPhone 14 Pro, it makes it slanted. The 14 Pro is here, iPhone 10 is here. Let us get into it. Let's do phone calls, three, two, one. Okay, let's go and get into music, three, two, one. These camera things are really messed up on all of them. So, okay, so I guess, okay, I think that will work out a little bit better. <laughs> Let's do settings, three, two, one. Now, even on an application like settings, it was still faster to load on the iPhone 14 Pro. Let's do their mail, let's do App Store, three, two, one. Okay, looks like we don't have Wi-Fi on this phone, which is very interesting. Clock, three, two, one. 
It's going up out of here. Let's go and get into mail. Let's just get that camera. Three, two, one. Okay, let's take a photo. Let's go ahead. And it took a longer time on the iPhone 10 for sure. Let's go and open up that photo. And even then, a little bit of uh, you know speed improvement when you go to the 14 Pro, and that's what you're going to notice for sure. Photos, three, two, one. And again, actually, I don't know which one is faster there. Let's go and hop out of this one. Let's go and get into some of these third-party applications that I have on both of them. Let's get into it. Let's do Facebook, three, two, one. Definitely there. You can see which one is the faster one. Twitter, three, two, one. Okay. Let's go and hop out of this one. Let's go and get into Snapchat, three, two, one. Okay. Let's go and hop out of here. Let's go and get into Snake First Blocks, three, two, one. And definitely was far faster on the iPhone 14 Pro. Let's try Temple Run 2, 3, 2, 1. And you can definitely see the iPhone 14 Pro was far ahead of the iPhone 10. I mean, that was a pretty big difference between these two for sure. Let's go and try Netflix, three, two, one. And here again, you can tell, well, I guess we had a little bit of a difference there. We can try something like Genshin Impact. Now, these two are going to be a little different, but we can try loading them up. So Genshin Impact, three, two, one. And I played this game on both, you know, and I'll definitely tell you when it comes to it. I think both of them do great jobs. I do think that possibly the you know newer iPhones will do a better job but because you have different graphic profiles you can change it does kind of help it you know to be honest but regardless definitely the iPhone 14 Pro is going to be giving you the better experience overall so in terms of that that kind of covers up the speed comparison now hitting on the cameras like I mentioned before the iPhone 14 Pro has a triple camera setup the iPhone 10 has a dual camera setup so you have a wide and ultra wide lens and a telephoto lens on the 14 Pro when the 10, you have a wide and a telephoto lens. Now, 4K at 60 on the back, we only have 1080p on the front of the iPhone 10. You have 4K at 60 on the front of the iPhone 14 Pro. Now, on the 10, you know, when this phone came out back in 2017, this was a pretty good camera. You know, you do have to keep in mind this was at the time where this phone was probably one of the more popular phones of that year. And that was a great year of phones back in 2017. With this phone, you have standard video mode, you have portrait mode, and it's still a good camera, you know, for its age. It's not a good camera for like this day and age, but you know, it, it'll still get the job done. If you're taking Snapchat videos and TikToks and stuff, it's going to be fine. You're missing things like an ultra wide sensor, which is a really cool thing. No 4K 60 on the front and no cinematic mode, no things like that that we have on the latest iPhones, but it's still like a decent camera. Like it's definitely not a horrible thing. The 14 Pro, like I mentioned, it is the latest and greatest from Apple. So you're getting all of the greatest capability from that manufacturer. So you're getting the newer cinematic modes, which is really cool. You're getting 15x zoom or nine. You're, yeah, you're getting 15x zoom right here and you're getting 0.5x zoom. You were just getting way more capability within this camera lens, which is awesome. So in my opinion, the camera quality is going to be much better on the iPhone 14 Pro. And even the battery life is going to be giving you a better experience on the iPhone 14 Pro as well. So at the end of the day, to kind of sum up this whole entire comparison, I will definitely tell you the iPhone 14 Pro is definitely the better phone over the iPhone 10 for sure. Now, does that mean the iPhone 14 Pro is worth $1,000 like more than the iPhone 10 or is, that, or is the iPhone 14 Pro like, you know, three or four times better than that, you know, based off the price tag? Not quite, you know, I, I think the iPhone 14 Pro is still overpriced at $1,000 to be honest. If you can get the 13 Pro for like $750 now, this thing should be probably like $850 to be honest. They probably should have removed the Dynamic Island. But, you know, I think the 14 Pro is the better phone. I'm still really happy with the iPhone 10. You know, this 2017 phone still is holding up quite well. Obviously, it's getting a little bit dated with software, but I'd love to see, you know, this thing and how it holds up in the next year or so. So. That kind of covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.